Sawate Tiskipuli and Sawate Omnes. Welcome again to another episode of Latin and Layman's. I thought I'd do something actually entirely different than what I've been doing before. But again, etymologizing, but also showing that a lot of the musculature that we deal with in anatomy is all Latin based. In fact, most of it is Latin. And then a lot of the bones are Greek. So we'll get into all this kinds of stuff because you guys know me uh, from what I've said um, in the past where uh, Latin is actually just a part of like my passion for learning and all that good stuff because I'm a, I did a bunch of medical uh, schooling and stuff like that. I'm a double major. So um, yeah, with that being said, and in kinesiology, biomechanics, anatomy and such. Um, and yeah, and finally, I think I'm finally cresting this sickness and finally a, a bit more on the mend. But that being said, I'll, I am a little lower energy and um, yep, I'm getting run down into the ground, I'm feeling like. So I needed this weekend. Happy Friday, y'all. Um, and with that being said, thanks again, everybody. I can't believe the growth that we're seeing. Let's just keep it up. Let's keep it going. The rhetoric revolution can't stop, won't stop. Let's not. And let's let it make it. It seems like it's made this crit critical mass. And from there, it's just going to keep on going, go, 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 going, 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 going. So that everybody knows that the rhetoric revolution is coming. And y'all are not ready. But you guys are. My posse is. So let's get on into some words. And maybe I'll throw up a couple more, like maybe triceps and biceps, brachii or something like that as well. But that being said, Let's just do these ones first. And before I actually get into this here, got to plug my podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Latin and Layman's Rhetoric Revolution. We have now gone up to 25 ratings on Apple Podcasts, and we are at, I believe, 58 on Spotify. So if you've left a review, uh, comment below. I'd love to shout you out. I can't, I don't know who leaves reviews on Spotify. I do know when people do it on Apple Podcasts because you can also leave a little blurb. I always like to shout out you guys on my podcast as well. If you do leave a little blurb, love to read it. Love to show my support for you guys because you're supporting me. And honestly, if I'm, you know, I'm getting this traction, I want everybody to succeed around me. That's why I plug my brother's uh, book. My brother is an author. If you guys are interested, uh, uh, you know what, I'll put it in the, the 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 comments if i remember to do so but my bro is a published author i love to read you guys love to read maybe you'd like to give his story a shot it's a sci-fi uh kind of post-apocalyptic dealio um and yeah i'm sure he would love that support as well because he was rather disenfranchised with how um it really did once he released it so you know, maybe we could show him some love and support as well, as well as my sister, as well as you guys, as well as everybody. I just let's I'm here to support you guys because you guys are here for me, too. So I got your back. And again, when we etymologize support real quickly, sub derivation of sub meaning under porto portare, which means to carry in Latin. So what are you doing when you support someone? You're just literally providing this safety net. You're carrying them from underneath and saying, I got you. I know you can do this but I got you if you slip and fall. That being said, latissimus dorsi. If you don't know what latissimus dorsi is, this is the back muscle right here. Um, I, yeah, it's this bad boy right here. I, I'm, I'm bad at knowing how to really flex it, but if you're a bodybuilder, you know how to like do that. Also, I have a pretty messed up shoulder because I've dislocated the shoulder so many times. So if I were to try and do it, you could probably see my winged scapula or something like that. Anyways, um, that being said, isimus is the superlative usage in Latin, which makes, well, positive comparative superlative, good, better, best. That means that this is going to refer to the est part, and then lata in the Latin means wide. So if I want to make wide and make it superlative, why don't I just make it the widest, or I can make it the most broad, because it could also be broad as well. And in this case, the most broad and then dorsi comes from the Latin dorsum, which means back. It's where we get a dorsal fin. Let's give it a bop. Um, but that I ending makes it genitive singular. And if you guys remember, genitive is the case that is associated with possessive pronoun. Oh, I'm sorry, possessive, uh, possessive nouns, possessive noun adjectives more specifically. Um, so that is how we why I put the of that there. We could either do of the or I could put 
back with the ticky mark S and the apostrophe S. And I could say the widest of the back, and in this case, muscles. Or I could say the back's widest muscle. There you go. If you didn't know, now you know. And it is the widest muscle because it goes from here. It uh, inserts all the way up. You know, I, I, I can't remember the insertions. And it goes all the way down. And it actually, well, it in, originates up here, inserts down there. That being said, let's get into our next one. Quadriceps femoris. Quadri meaning four. Seps in the Latin referring to heads. And then femoris again referring to of uh, the upper femur. Because this IS ending in the third declension, see, this is a second declension noun. This is a third declension noun. I is the, IS is the generative singular in third declension. And then femor refers to femur and or the upper leg. So what do we got here? We got four heads of the upper leg and or femur. And if you guys didn't know, we refer to muscles uh, individually as muscle heads a lot of time, muscle bellies. So we've got the... Uh, vastus lateralis, the vastus intermedius. We have the rectus femoris, one of the, our very few muscles in our body that are biarticular, aka they cross both the hip joint as well as the patellar. And then finally, that teardrop one that you guys see a lot, that's the vastus medialis. So next one that we're going to get into here, and I just got to make sure that we're filming here. All right, we're still filming, so we're good. That being said, <sighs> shout out to a Azalea. I don't know how many I've done already, but I'm sure you're counting for me. Thanks. Gastro, referring to stomach, right? Like gastrointestinal, gastric, um, gastric juices. I don't know, hydrochloric acid that's in there. And then nemius, that knemius comes from neem, which means the lower leg. So in this case, and I'm going to have to do a little bit of an example here because I always like to do this, especially for my students. They love doing this as well. Gastrocnemius. Do you know which muscle this refers to? Because uh, what's the stomach of the lower leg? Well, if you do a little bit of brain sus in here, why don't you pull up your leg here and realize that you can do a little bit of this. And look how you can kind of see my calves. All right, I don't have good calves. Don't at me. I don't care. Um, it's like a little... It's like a little belly. You can hold it like it's a little belly. That's the way that I think about it as well. And I think that that's kind of a fun way to etymologically think about what gastrocnemius is. We also have another one right here that is more flatter called the soleus. And then on the front side, the tibialis anterior. And then we also have tibialis posterior as well. Tibialis is what's going to make you raise it like that. And then gastrocnemius is what's going to do this. So this is what we call plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. If you didn't know, now you know. Okay, so I got to wrap this up here because I'm about to be sabotaged by Carline in three minutes. So just want to do a couple more here. Remember, buy, buy like a bicycle, buy two. Buy meaning two seps again referring to head and skip it a bit of 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 referring to head. And then brachii here, well, brachium refers to the arm, and then that I ending refers to genitive singular, aka making that a possessive noun. So either of the upper arm or the upper arms with a ticky mark S, aka apostrophe S. I just like to be fun about it. And then so biceps brachii, well, we got two heads, aka muscle heads of the upper arm. And then triceps is three heads of the upper arm. If you didn't know, now you know. The triceps are three muscles. The biceps are two. My, my students are always blown by that. And I tell them, especially my lifting bros, I'm like, yo, you guys, if you guys want to get big arms, stop focusing so much on the biceps, even though we always focus on the flexing of the biceps, because the meat and the potatoes, really, of the whole upper arm is going to be kind of on the backside. So we can't neglect that. Just like how a lot of people tend to neglect their hamstrings because they're posterior, they can't see them a lot. Give them some love. Posterior is so important for explosive movements like jumping. That being said, hope you learned something new. Tempo Sesta Skateray.